Hey everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today, we have got another Dungeons & Dragons Prestige class description. And today, the class that we are going to be looking at is the Draco Lexi. Yes, the Draco Lexi, right there. Now, this Draco Lexi, um, as you might guess based on the name, um, Draco meaning dragon and Lexi meaning words, or something like that, um, it's all about draconic words. Uh, and this is from the races of the dragon here. Boom. And so let's talk about the Draco Lexi, because it's an interesting class. Um, it's actually quite interesting and kind of good in a lot of ways. So uh, let's look at the requirements. Um, they do say Bard is the easiest. That is definitely true. Sorcerer is better. So let's let's go through this a little bit. So the feats, uh, it's going to require you to know either a shoe materials or still spell. Now, I highly recommend only getting one of those. And we'll get into why later. Uh, so next up, you want skills. You want either you need our knowledge, arcana eight ranks, perform oratory four ranks, and spellcraft uh, four ranks. Now that's this is where we get in. This is where we start seeing bard, the oratory. Yeah, that's kind of a thing there. Uh, knowledge arcana um, is, and spellcraft are pretty common for all spellcasters, so not a big deal. Um, spells must uh, be able to spontaneously cast second level arcane spells and must know at least one language dependent spell. So that's kind of cool. Um, not super familiar with the language dependent spells. Um, but you need to have at least one. I think there's probably some in this book that I just haven't looked at too much. But that is a requirement for this. Now, on top of that, um, second level uh, spells, not a big deal, but they have to be spontaneous. So wizard isn't going to count. And, of course, none of your divine spell casting is going to count either, even though most of that is prepared anyways. But it's not going to count. Um, so you're going to need to pick, like, a sorcerer or a bard or something like that. Um, next requirement is you must be able to speak Draconic plus at least two languages from the following list. And those the list would be Orin, Dwarven, Elven, and Ignan. Again, it's easier for Bards since Bards actually have speak language um, as a class skill. So that's kind of nice um, for them that they can, uh, it takes them less skill points to learn new languages. Now, you can also do this um, with a high intelligence score and just having you know, uh, a race that allows you to take uh, at least two of those as bonus languages, or maybe even as an automatic language. Um, like you could be a dwarf or an elf, and then just pick up, you know, like dwar uh, the other language. Like a dwarf could pick up, like, probably Orin, Elven as bonus languages, and then uh, Draconic somehow. So you'd have to spend like a couple skill points. No big deal. Um, so it's not that bad. Um, so let's get into what you get. So you get spell casting at every level except for first level. So you'll be one level behind, but that's not so bad. That's pretty good as far as prestige classes go. Um, you get draconic words, which there are a number of. You'll get one at uh, four. Uh, you'll get one, one on fourth, seventh, and tenth level, and you'll want. Uh, you'll, there'll be a different list. You can pick up the other ones, but. Uh, you're definitely going to want to pick one that's uh, the highest level that you're allowed. Mm, it's kind of, it makes a lot of sense to only go for the ones that are, um, uh, the min that, that you just barely meet the level for, because the, the higher up ones are better. So if, if you do that, you'll end up with one of each. So that's pretty good. They're varying, um, I could go into detail on some of them, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, now, at second level, you get a bonus feat. And that bonus feat is the other feat that was a prereq that you didn't take. So that's why I recommend only taking one, because uh, if you don't, and you take both of them, then you actually don't get any benefit at second level. So uh, it makes more sense to just not take the second one and get it for free at second level. It's just a lot better idea. Um, now, uh, you also get the power word spells, and this is really cool. You get uh, three of them uh, throughout the course of uh, 
the 10 levels in this class. And the cool thing about the power word spells with this is you get them at one level lower uh, than they're normally. So uh, this is why I say it'd be better to go with a sorcerer. With a sorcerer, you could potentially, if you've done right, get uh, access to like power word kill when you're only 16th level. Normally, you can't get that until at least 17th. So this will get you access to um, a, a ninth level spell as an eighth level spell at sixteenth level uh, as a sorcerer. So that's pretty good. I, wait, wait, never mind. That doesn't work because you don't get spell casting at first level. So you, at least be on par. Um, so as a sorcerer, you'd be getting it one level earlier. That's all right. So not as good as I thought. It'd actually still just be on par with a wizard, but. That's pretty good that it puts sorcerers on par with wizard in terms of picking up uh, at least one spell. Uh, you have to do it like exactly right, but it's not a huge issue. Um, now these uh, draconic words, they do a various number of things, but and you can add them onto spells too. Uh, and you can use them once per round. You, uh, one draconic word can be used every round. Um, there's no limit on how often you can do this. Um, at least no effective limit. I mean, there's only, what, uh, 10 rounds per minute and, what, 60 minutes an hour, you know, 24 hours in a day. So, you know, you only got that many. But, you know, by that, that that's the same logic of a fighter can only swing a sword so many times a day because, you know, you can only swing it like, four times a turn. Yeah. So... It's the same rule on that, um, except for fighter. There's ways to do more with haste and all that other, and all sorts of other stuff. This, there's no way around it. Um, let's see. Uh, you get uh, bonus spells known. This is actually pretty nice as well. So um, uh, a, Draco, uh, a, Dra a Draco Lexi is particularly talented in using uh, spells that incorporate language and speech. At fifth level, you can add any two language-dependent spells uh, from your class's spell list to uh, your list of spells known for that class. So at fifth level, you can get two free spells, basically. Uh, so that's pretty nice. And uh, especially for like sorcerers who only have so many uh, spells known. Uh, and that's the same with uh, the power word spells. Those are, get added on as extra. So you basically get more spells known than you normally would as a Draco Lexi. So that's pretty nice. Now, one of the best things about it is something that they get at 8th level. Uh, I think it's 8th. Uh, yes, 8th level. And that is voice in silence. Now, this is really nice. What this does is it allows you to... Um, uh, six, uh, give up a spell slot in order to make it so that uh, you can speak in a uh, silence area or while deafened um, for, uh, I believe it's a number of rounds, uh, yeah, equal to the level of the spell. So if you give up a ninth level spell, you do this, and now for nine rounds, you can cast spells. Uh, uh, for nine rounds, you have this aura of um, anti-silence around you. Uh, it's only in your square, but still, like, now all of a sudden you can cast uh, sound-dependent spells freely for that amount of time, and no silence spell can affect you. That's pretty awesome. There's no rolling involved, so it just supersedes any silence in effect. That's really good if you're... Um, if you ever end up in a situation where you need to cast spells in silence, which actually has been an issue for some of my players recently. But, um, very coincidental right there. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Draco Lexi, it's a, actually a pretty good class. Um, some of the things I didn't talk about, of course, bad base attack bonus. What else would you expect? It's a casting class. Uh, D6 hit dice, actually pretty decent for a casting class. Um, let's see... Bad for it and reflex save, but goodwill. Again, very typical for our spellcasting class. Uh, skills, uh, 4 plus int, um, with decent list of spell uh, skills. So, not too bad, in all honesty. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty good class, all in all. Uh, I can see it being 
quite useful for uh, spellcasters, uh, especially if you want to, uh, for really any sort of um, uh, spontaneous spellcaster, it can make for a great prestige class add-on. There's a lot of things that are useful. Extra spells known, uh, being able to cast spells while in silence. It takes some resources to do. You have to give up some spell slots, but not the end of the world to do that. Um, yeah, uh, especially seeing sorcerers have so many. Like, it's actually pretty cheap in all reality. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great class. Uh, it's a pretty good one to take, in all honesty. Um, but that's really all I have for the class. If you have anything uh, you want to add, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. If you like the video, please consider giving me a like. Um, also, uh, you know, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel, uh, you know, ringing the little bell. And um, on top of that, uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider sharing it. That helps out a lot. But as always, I'm Mitch. I'll be seeing you.